Good morning, River Heights. Happy Monday. It's a great Monday. A little chilly this morning, but it's going to be warm this afternoon and then pretty much warm all week. So I am going to just say it right now. Spring has sprung. So pretty excited about that. Um, yeah, it's going to be a great week this week. It really is. Let me, uh, let me pray for us. We're going to continue our discussion on discipleship. Uh, week three um, of discipleship. And we've got a few more weeks to go. So let's let's pray. Just come Holy Spirit. Uh, we just thank you for who you are. God, just thank you for this opportunity to that we get to just meet together, share the word, drink some coffee or water or whatever. But Lord, we just get to come together and just share the word. And so, Father, just pray that you come. Yeah, just come, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Lisa. Ah, oh, it's good to see people this morning. Yay, I probably missed a few people. So, hi, Sue. Sue is watching. She's probably on her way to work right now, but that's okay. Drive safe. Um... Yeah, we're talking about discipleship some more. Um, talk about this discipleship hand. Good morning, Mary. And uh, just a quick recap, discipleship, um, talking from Matthew. Um, good morning, Cindy. We just started here a minute ago. We just prayed, so we're going to get started. No big deal. Um, but just talking about the hand of discipleship and, and when Jesus healed the the beggar's hand, and one hand was great, and one hand was all withered. And you think about the discipleship, and there are you know five to six different areas of discipleship, and um, <clears throat> and just we're gonna see and test how our discipleship is. What is our discipleship like with our hand as we get to that point? So last week we talked about the pointer finger, we talked about passionate, intimate worship, and being a passionate, intimate worshiper. And we talked about that last week, what that looked like, whether you're, and that's your pointer finger because it points up, points to God. So we're worshiping God. So that's your pointer finger. And on a scale, this is like, I am perfect, the best worshiper ever. This is how I passionately intimate worship. This is me. If not, you do this. Good morning, Marianne and Paul. Um, is it halfway? Is it down? Is it maybe not even existent? Good morning, Bradley. And so, you know, where is that at? So today, we're going to talk about the next finger, which is the middle finger. So notice, I am holding up two fingers, peace, two fingers, uh, but it is the middle finger, and it represents compassion-driven outreach. So as a worshiper, good morning, Tammy, as a worshiper, uh, the middle finger is compassion-driven outreach. We have passion, intimate worshiper, and then compassion-driven outreach because it's the longest outreaching uh, finger that we have typically. Um, and so just uh, letting you know about what this, what this really means. And so compassion is concern for other people, uh, concern for uh, their needs, uh, maybe even their desires, their m misfortunes. Um, that they have. Um, compassion literally means to suffer together. And so what does that mean? What does that look like? But then outreach um, is to go beyond, um, to go beyond where you think you can go even, um, to go beyond where other people have, have gone, or um, to go beyond the needs of people, like go above and beyond. That's outreach. And so when we put compassion-driven outreach together, it's going beyond people's needs and trying to meet their needs and then some. And so when we do compassion-driven outreach as a disciple of Christ, when we do compassion-driven outreach, we assume, not assume something, but we, as we take on the image of Christ because Christ, um, in Mark 10, 45, it says, uh, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. And so um, we want to we wanna imitate that. We want to take on and assume that role and help him and, and really have God work through us 
to do that because he came to serve. So we want to serve as well. And so that is what we want as a disciple is to have a compassion driven outreach where our heart is outward focused and we are outreaching to people. We are reaching beyond our limits and beyond maybe even the limits of, of the people and asking God for help because sometimes we need God's help. Well, we need God's help all the time, but we need it to reach out to those that are in need. And so we have the Compassion Driven Outreach. Now, outreach can be um, in a couple ways. Outreach um, can be done in a compassionate way, a uh, very respectful way. Other other ways. Hi, Jesse and Christina. Great to see you guys on this morning. Um, but when, huh, so see the hand, right? But when, when outreach is done without all the other stuff, it can be very offensive. And I'm not going to flip y'all off. That's not a good thing to do. But if it's, if you do that, if you take everything away and all that's left is the middle finger, you can be very offensive to people. So we don't want to be offensive. We want to do what we do out of love, out of compassion, um, out of respect for the people that we're outreaching to or outreaching for, outreaching with. Um, and so that's the idea for uh, passion, uh, compassion-driven outreach. Now, Galatians 5 talks about why we should do this. It says, for you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. And this is where our outreach comes from. This is why we do what we do, like for Thanksgiving, and we're always trying to figure out different ways to do um, to do outreach and things like that. And as we're starting this pandemic is coming to an end, we're going to be able to do a lot more things around the community and the area um, and be able to just do some amazing outreach for people. Um, and we want to do that. We want to be a part of um, the community and what we're doing. And as Jesus said, we're, we're to use our freedom um, to serve each other. And that's what it's about. I remember um, just quickly, uh, I've been was a youth pastor for quite a, quite a few years, and we did a thing called Summer of Service. And even River Heights came down. I was I started at the Vineyard in Iowa when I was there, Heartland Vineyard Church, and basically it was an outreach conference for about four days, and kids came in from all over, and uh, they were housed in in our congregation's homes. So the cost was cut way back um, for the conference, and we had worship, we had services, we had um, some breakout sessions. But then what we would do is we broke in, we had teams, and then on those teams were they were outreach teams. And every day we went out and did outreaches to the community for the community, and we set up outreaches, and and they were outreaching everywhere. And the idea was that they could come and do this conference and figure out and do outreaches that they could take home with them. In other words, that they could do back home. They didn't need to build a house. They didn't need to put in a septic tank. They didn't need to, it's like, here, here's a case of water handed out to a group of construction workers. Um, those types of things. So it's, and I love what we do here, the Thanksgiving giveaway. Oh man, that is an amazing, an amazing outreach. And so when you touch 900 lives, man, God is amazing and he worked through us to do it. And so when we do that, we have compassion driven outreach. And so as a disciple, we have worship. Where's your worship at? And then as a compassion driven outreach, is it more? Is it less? What is, what is your, your, your finger? What is your hand starting to look like? Is it something like this? Is it like this is it I don't know that's up to you to figure out but that is what compassion driven outreach is compassion driven outreach is looking out for others and helping where we can help and be of assistance and going beyond sometimes even what our own capabilities are and relying on God to help us through that so with that for today guys that is our devotion for today um Man, it's so great. I love Mondays. Mondays are great. I'm probably the only one that loves Mondays. Well, maybe not, but I love Mondays. So God bless you guys. Have a fantastic day. I'm going to pray for us. And um, yeah, hopefully your day is great. So Holy Spirit, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for our time here together.
Um, Lord, may we take what we kind of what we learn, Lord, as we learn discipleship and what that looks like and what that means for each one of us. It's going to be different, but Lord, help us to grow in this area. Help us to grow in um, being an intimate worshiper, um, being a passionate intimate worshiper, being compassion driven and outreach, Lord. Just help us to be those. Help us to grow in those areas. We aren't going to be perfect, but just help us to grow. So Holy Spirit, come. We thank you for dying on that cross for us so we could spend eternity with you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, have a fantastic day. Do not play too hard, but don't sit around either. So play as hard as you can. All right. See you. God bless, guys. Talk to you later.